Murder Hobo Inc. Between the Rolls. I am back, baby, and we are going to rock it tonight. We're going to uh, all around the Christmas tree, uh, even though Thanksgiving what? is the holiday that's coming first. I am not <laughs> one of those unbelievers. Let me just say that right now. Thanksgiving is the holiday, then a Arbor Day, and then we can start celebrating Christmas. Arbor Day? Uh, yeah. Arbor you never Day went was... out and planted a tree because you were going to cut one down? You guys are monsters. Yeah, but I think that would be Arbor Day was a while ago. No, no, no. Fur Arbor Day. A fur Arbor Day. I've fur never heard of fur, fur, fur Arbor Day. You wear your fur coats, you plant a fur tree, uh-huh. and then later on you go chop one down. Go look yes. fur a tree. <laughs> oh, oh, his co-host is here. My co-host. He had a temperature of 104 last week. Oh, no. Oh, and is somehow and he, still alive. And he gave um, it to you, too, I think. No, not really. Get out of here. Oh, yes, you like the octopus. Okay. <laughs> uh, he is my child. I was about to out. say. Uh, he's he's going to run the second child. cred campaign. Hi. Did you ask mom for a cupcake? It's so cute. You definitely need to make is it. He a on, yes, he oh, is on screen. Well. I had to go to Twitch to make sure that he actually is being seen. He is totally being seen. I don't think he is. I think I'm talking no, to No, he's no, own. he totally is. He's oh, on no. he's on screen with oh, you. No, Twitch famous already. He's Twitch At famous. Age, he's, he's there doing he famous. is. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, so <laughs> before we get into uh, this wonderful festivist time of the year, uh, let's go around real quick and introduce people. I am, of course, Kyle. I've been on a, uh, a hiatus for the past couple of weeks uh, because I've been sick nonstop. I did not have COVID. That's good. I just like being sick and having my blood drawn at the same time, which extends the sickness, it turns out. I thought oh. to myself, let's make it a whole month long. And then I didn't. So that's me, everybody. Let's go ahead and introduce the wonderful, the always bearded Carol. There you go. Don't, don't see no beard here. Hi, everyone. My name is Carol. I'm a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and commission mini painter. I have my own Twitch stream under Muses underscore Touch, uh, where I'll be painting tomorrow. Uh, and I'm painting, I'm painting something from that other, you know, that other campaign that's, you know, internet famous. Look, here's a little Pumat soul for you. Who's that? <laughs> uh, and I'm normally on Cred, which our awesome GM is here, Kyle. Um, oh, hey, everybody. And uh, I've occasionally How do one do shots. Who knows? Maybe a pawn this weekend. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of busy this weekend getting ready for the holidays. No, no holidays. Don't don't talk about that stuff yet. We can't talk about that yet. Oh, we can't. Oh no, no we can't talk about it yet. David, go ahead. You're up. Hey, I'm David. You can usually find me here most Tuesdays on Between the Rolls. Uh, I am also on a little show co- called Cacophony. I play Sadar, <laughs> the yeah, the gender fluid uh, change like it's, it's been in female form for what six months now or something like that. I think like you're. That. I think I think uh, I think they are more she apparently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I also play Crow in uh, the Calamity campaign B side, and I play none other than Ingve the Ravenkin on the Calamity A side. Uh, every once in a while. Uh, get a get a chance to be on a one shot and uh yeah that's about it (laughs) nice wow nice nice and uh in case you want to say hi or whatever i'm D and devious on the twitterverse so every once in a while i post or say something witty so (laughs) witty witty so, guys, before we even start in and talk about what happened last week and what we're going to talk about this week, uh, we do have to go through the wonderful, the always wonderful spiel where I try and keep track of what I'm trying to say in the middle of saying it and then proceed to stumble across it. Will I get it with two breaks time? It's not that hard. Guys, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to talk about some cool, awesome D&D stuff, perhaps some of the stuff we talk about tonight, you can hit us up on our Discord page. If you want to play with us, hit us at uh, mhoboinc at gmail.com or on Twitter, 
We do have the open one shot this Saturday. Is it going to be something wonderful? Is it going to be something spectacular? You have to sign up if you want to find out. If you Frank are is running, it's so likely. Our, you are interrupting me in my field. That's right. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you don't want to miss out on any visual gags that may be showing up here, we do suggest watching the Twitch stream. However, we understand some of our voices are much more seductive when you don't have to look at these faces made for radio. Oh, you can yes. find that over at Podbean, the Mhobo Inc. podcast. You can find all the between the rolls, all the cred, all the calamity, and uh, cacophony, and all the other co- podcasts going on out there. We have some cool swag coming up. I don't know if you've heard about this. There's a holiday calling up called Black Friday. Uh, It's this evil capitalist holiday where you beat your neighbors to death with shopping carts uh, and run over little old ladies with handbags. Uh, You get in the handbag, hop in it, and that's how you run them over. You beat people by picking up the shopping carts and heading them with it. I think I got that mixed around. Uh, and so uh, as part of that we do have a shop here where you can buy t-shirts uh, either for ten dollars or ten dollars off to be honest kind of when both. people tell me that I'm supposed to be listening to something and say something Kyle, I do my utmost thing to ignore it I have the clarification on that it's like ten dollar t-shirts and ten percent off everything else Ooh. at least I think that's what it was so let me just say right now cred looks great on a t-shirt it I'm does. thinking about getting the black and then the white and uh and black cred will look awesome honestly though i think uh ooh, do they have a sandstone because i want to get calamity in sandstone oh make it kind of yes. like calamity. it's on a cave or something that the that calamity cool. design that frank that did cool. frank frank did the calamity design it's really cool so uh yeah a sandstone colored, you know, or or maybe even like a gold would look really, really cool. Ooh, or you know what? Like like a steel color, because that you're finding good. these ancient Rock. cities and shotguns and stuff. So it's like if someone drew a cave painting on the side of a steel skyscraper, or if you go <laughs> to the St. Louis the Arch, people carve in stuff on the arch all the time. It would look like that. That's how I'd imagine it. Would look. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, and then we'll send you to federal prison. Anyway, uh, uh, tonight we'd also like to thank our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice, for when you're rolling like poop, Pirate Dog Dice will make your dice made of poop. Uh, that no, being said, that specific die is on hold right now because they're working on how to uh, give me the gift of dog poop. But also, you know, not get in trouble for it because I guess there's a law against someone gifting dog poop. I don't know. Uh, but check out their dice. They come up with some cool stuff. Did you have the music notes, uh, Pirate Dog Dice, Carol? Uh, yeah, well, I had a set. You can have dice custom made to your character. So I had a set made for Taryn. And they did. She made, What she did was she actually printed out like little musical notations on paper, and she put that into the dice. And, and it's, they were really cool, I, although that set is not up here because it only rolls well for one character. I've tried using them at other games, and they were like shit. So until we do like a one shot or something, Frank with that character, <clears throat> Taryn. Uh, I don't think it's those Taryn dice because are gonna... last time I checked, Taryn doesn't have an arm or a leg or something like that. Yeah, but that, that was not... Wait, that was not her dice that did that to her. That was yours. Oh, you have the true. leg, that's, you have the thing nice they could roll what remo- got removed. Yeah. Or what get damaged. You also almost died, so I, I blame your dice. I know. You, well, dying. I got hit a couple times. Before. I was at five hit points before the friggin' thing exploded. So yeah, you... I thought I was going to die. And then the room smelled like uh, cooking flesh. Speaking of smells, can I talk about Adventure Sense and their new fresh carry-on fireballed smell (laughs) is delicious. There's a hint of bacon. Firebolt? Yeah, carry-on firebolt. Uh, I think I should have done singed carcass. That's that rolls off the tip. Singed carcass. Is this supposed to be Taryn singed carcass? Oh, that's great. Taryn singed carcass. You know, I, she wasn't I'm dead. fairly certain if I keep suggesting these scents to Adventure Sense, <laughs> they're going to make a special 
murder hobo themed <laughs> adventure sense. Do you really Errol think Finn's they watch the show? Huh? Aaron's singe. Ooh. I can see yeah, exactly. I can say whatever I want now at this point, right? Nice. As long as we sell those products. Anyway, guys, uh, Black <laughs> Friday is around the corner, so make sure you check out Adventures <coughs> and some of their other stuff over at Odd Fish Games. Uh, I'm sure you can find some amazing deals out there. Uh, and if not, they're wonderful people. Support them uh, and tell them that we sent you and that you're interested in Taryn's Singed Leg Adventure Scent. Uh, singed what really leg? It works in other situations. It's lying other there. than singeing Taryn's leg. I mean, I think her leg is lying there as a lump of charcoal. Burnt village uh, in the dragon's mouth. See? So many, so many possibilities. Oh my for God. Some reason it smells like barbecue or something like that. <laughs> we'll see if it was, you know, it's if you don't, it's Taryn, not Bob. Otherwise, it could have been the barbecue. Ah, oh, there you like go. Like Walking nice, Dead. Nice, that nice is, barbecue. That is, good. that is going that to was be good. New, the barbecue. The new yep. holiday. Poor yeah. Bob. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? <laughs> All right. Mm. Uh, guys, we do have Murder Hobo Con 2 in the mix now. <laughs> that is going to be on February, Valentine's Day. Love the steel. Uh, 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 love... Oh, you know what? The way I said that made it sound like I was going to go full on MAGA hat right there. Uh-huh. Love the steel. Uh, let's go, Brand. There you go. Oh, don't Love even Brand. start. <laughs> I feel sorry for people that are actually named that right now. <laughs> Hey, they're feeling a lot of love and a lot of support is what I'm thinking. They are. They are feeling a lot of support. And they deserve it, except for you, Brandon, in elementary school where you knocked my cupcake on the floor. Uh, I hate you. Oh. Screw you, Brandon. Uh, (laughs) Anyway, uh, um, but we do have Murder Hobo Con Uh, uh, 2. Love is in the air to steal, to murder, uh, and we're going to go and donate stuff to charity. We have the uh, uh, submissions going live December 15th. You have (laughs) two, possibly three weeks to decide what you are going to run for Murder Hobo Con. Uh, Sign up there. It's for charity. It's for good cause. Uh, It'll help put my son through school, get that brain surgery um, that he so desperately needs, possibly replace those teeth. Them. You are talking to them. Say hi. Hi. Okay. Good night. Oh. So before we get too into no, he really in is going to be internet faces. Faces. Before we get too far involved in here, we did have one game last week that was cacophony on Thursday. We didn't have a one shot as we are taking breaks, getting ready to deal with all of our wonderful families. For the upcoming holiday of Thanksgiving, which means we need to do a little goose for a little anger management. Are you little? Uh, and so I believe <laughs> our one, our only David, uh, uh, was playing in cacophony. Why don't you tell us what happened? And I'm going to mute myself. Nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Cacophony, episode 307 for Murder Hobo. Uh, Yeah, Cacophony, uh, that episode (coughs) might as well just been a night in Nathan. So, um, yeah, Camille and Zadar pick up where we left off. It's like the following day, and we spent a day just walking around town with different encounters. We uh, end up running into our, our old friend Phineas and uh yeah he's going back and forth getting this information uh we spend most of the the day uh searching for clues we end up in uh yeah the peekaboo lounge and uh of course Zadar looking as she does or whatever gets accosted by none other than Porky from Porky's (laughs) inside the peekaboo lounge so yeah so in addition to job offers uh he and camille uh explored the possibilities of where that shot was fired from uh from that second uh story window overlooking the plaza 
uh, we're trying to find out who the occupant of that room was. We find that the person that usually occupies that room was uh, occupied in another room with a little sign that usually says occupado. Uh, anyway, so anybody could have went in there and fired the shot. So, so uh, yeah. So from there, uh, we follow some other clues. There's a co commotion in the harbor, uh, apparently a fire. People come in on, you know, reeking of smoke. Uh, we interviewed them. Uh, let's see, we end up. Uh, oh my God. And I got to watch this episode too. So it was, yeah, yeah I, I've caught up on Cacophony. Oh it yeah. Was, it was good. Oh yeah. So uh, Zadar and Camille get slipped a mysterious note uh, from uh, a strange a mysterious half elf that walks by with the name, the name Raleigh. Espinosa, Espinosa. Yeah. Jeez, boy, that just rolls right. Well, he's got a name that begins with an R too, huh? Mm -hmm. I wonder. Mm -hmm. I wonder, and I'll get mm -hmm. to that in just a second. So, <laughs> <laughs> so as our inv investigation unfurls and stuff like that, uh, we get a little hungry, so we decide to go into like the local pizza hut or whatever to. Uh, uh, get some nourishment we also ha had a lunch during the day that didn't turn out very well either we met our friend uh aerosmith and eh, not aerosmith <laughs> zeppelin uh we met there's zeppelin. so many characters there's so many names so many names frank uh so and dinner with with him he wanted to know about his nephew aerosmith who happens to be in town so uh yeah we just chatted about that uh and then we find i uh, i zadar uh shoots the name over to zeppelin uh if he'd heard of raleigh espinoza and it turns out uh yeah he's a sky pirate what what kind of weapons do sky pirates use gee let me guess crossbow perhaps? i think uh, i think uh it, the seagoing version probably do too yeah like, shot. oh yeah so anyway so yeah that was a a big clue that we, we need to follow up on so but in our stroll that night zadar and camille get hungry go to the local pizza hut and uh walk in on a robbery <laughs> and of course as soon as we walk in frank's like roll initiative so uh that ended up ending very well especially for zadar and camille because now we get free pizza whenever we want in nathan <laughs> and uh yeah and it it pretty much ended right around there our armed escort colonel clank uh also apprehended uh two lovers suspected lovers by the oh they were part of the robbery, weren't they? Part of the oh, robbers? No, 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 no. They weren't part of the robbers. Uh, they had they a little com commotion, a uh, little lover spat or whatever, and Clank saw oh, it. Right, looked right, like right. assault was going on, so he, he intervened. Yeah, uh, and it turns out, oh yeah, that's right. The person that he apprehended is none other than Raleigh Espinosa. So we'll have to pick it up where that is uh, for the next ep episode following week or maybe two weeks but anyway um, it'll be the following week because as far as i know cred is off until two weeks sure. okay. although although of course and and the order of pick is still looking for rosa oh yeah order of pick is still looking for rosa and always shooting a look at zadar so. yeah and you guys actually started looking for rosa which i thought was mm -hmm. interesting that's what that's who we started off looking for but we got this other lead so we're following that so oh anyway, yeah that's the episode but check it out rolling. it's on youtube in the archives uh it may still be on twitch but uh, no it, don't last very long yeah no it's two it's two weeks it's two okay weeks. so it All should right. be until the next episode premieres sure sure so anyway check it out it's pretty funny you know and of course you know Camille always ends up knocking somebody in the crotch with her quarter set. Well, now so she wants to throat punch everybody. That's the other character, it's throat the... punch. No, oh, no, no, that's no, just, no, that's just Carrie when she that's plays. Carrie. It's just Carrie. Camille it's said just she Carrie. Was gonna she's got to throat punch, punch, punch everybody. Although... <laughs> you know, she was in the Iron DM not too long ago. 
I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure she uh, created a gang of throat punchers in her city, which was strange. She probably did, yeah. but not but a pastor. Um. All right. Well, that's been our past week. This week, uh, again, Thanksgiving is this Thursday. No cred, despite my Turkthulu uh, behind me. Uh, I have much worse things uh, spread upon the table for those folks there. Uh, and this Saturday, we do have a one shot coming in. Sign up if you want to be a part of that. It's always going to be fun. Um, and then I do believe, I don't know if there's a break with Cacophony. Uh, the way David was saying, there might be, there might not be. No, I, I don't think there is for Cacophony, no. but the cred's taking a break, but Cacophony shouldn't be. All right. Man, this would, would have been a perfect week for cred, you know, with the ghouls and feasting. Yeah, this would have been a perfect... You know, he's got a good point. <laughs> I mean, I don't know who's going to be home or what, but... Well, um, if I hear back from Ernie, I will personally start twi- uh, uh, streaming on Twitch, and we'll find out what Riley did while the other two were distracted. Yeah, you, you should have just a, an episode where it's just a flashback to what did, Riley did. Did Ernie just, like, fall off the planet or something? I mean, we heard anything from him since he dropped out? I have not heard anything uh, yet, hmm. and... That's what I find is cause for celebration. Speaking of celebration, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Let's talk about it's that time of year. You know, we have the big, uh, uh, big holidays around us: Halloween, uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, what's that other one? Oh, there are several. I mean, yeah. there. Well, I mean, the real one, guys. The real one, Christmas. My oh come on! <laughs> Merry Christmas, Hana Quantica. I was about to say that, that's more Merry like Christmas it. Hana Quantica. There you go. <laughs> hey. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, uh, 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 like many of you, we here at Murder Hobo are tempted and always fall for that temptation because we are murder hobos of trying to make one shots uh, that involve the holidays. Uh, or sometimes just work it into our campaigns. Uh, and so, I mean, why why is that something that we even do? Uh, and should we? Shouldn't we just appreciate the holidays and the family we have instead of those nerds around the table who need to put deodorant on more often? I'm looking at know. you, Kyle. You didn't put deodorant on today, and I can smell it. It's disgusting. Nice. Wow, Kyle. Wow. Anyway, Kyle. David. We didn't uh, need to know that. What? <laughs> I mean, we're not there to smell it, so we didn't really need to know. That's why I have <laughs> adventure sense. Adventure sense. Do you rub them under your pants? There you go. Adventure sense roll. Oh, that is cute. Yeah, sewers. there we go. Things are worse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, wow. Man. That's too funny. So, what was the question? Oh, uh, so the question is, I guess we have uh, um, <coughs> a few things we can talk about. Obviously, we like to do holidays. It's a great way to kind of break from a campaign that may be going stale or maybe easing back a little bit from whatever themes of horror and scariness um, or maybe <gasps> into a more serious campaign for a night. Um what do you guys like to use the one shots that you make for holidays for? What What's the design when you make them? What are the goals that you're trying to do with a, with a holiday one shot? Uh, as far as like objective for the one shot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you say as opposed, well, what do you do for a one shot, your objective for that uh, in creating a holiday one shot? And what's your objective for making a campaign holiday session? Hmm. Okay. That's not a question. You know what? I didn't read the. Uh, the yeah. Well. Yeah, I was going to say that's totally not on the freaking outline. <laughs> Is it not? That's all right. Let me see. I don't uh, no, that, it's not like we can't talk about it. Come yeah, on. Man, let's talk about you it. Can so, throw, you can throw curveballs at us all night. We're fine. I will anyway. do that all night long. Go ahead. Uh, all right. Hey, 
Uh, well, you, you know, I mean, the one shots that we've had on Murder Hobo for the holidays. I mean, I'm on my second anniversary with uh, Murder Hobo. So this is like my second uh, holiday season coming up. And like with Frank, he always had it. It was all always some kind of epic quest to to save some Kris Kringle or, or Santa like, uh, <laughs> you know, person whose sleigh crashed in the middle of a volcano, <laughs> frozen volcano <coughs> or something like that. That was that's a hell of an episode. <laughs> anyway, folks, if you get a chance to watch it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's usually involved with something like that. I don't know. I mean, trying to make a campaign for the entire like holiday season. I, that, well, that, that sounds rough. I think. Oh, wait, that wait. sounds I rough think... and like some serious uh, prep. It's a holiday taking place in a campaign. In the campaign. Yeah. Oh, it's not okay, a campaign or so a holiday. Let's say... Although that would be a challenge. <laughs> yeah, I like a 12 days. Of ca- April uh, Fool's. Oh, 12. Oh, 12. 12, 12 encounters or whatever for a short for a campaign. campaign. Ooh, I yeah. that would yeah. be kind of cool, actually. That would be kind of cool. You better write that down, David, because I'm going to ask you. Oh my God. Later. So here's David. You're going to have to you're going to have to write this up, and then we're going to have to run one episode, one scenario every single month of the year. Oh, geez. Okay. All right. I mean, for, <laughs> for, for the month of December, like why? why no, why? no, no, no. Oh. Oh yeah, okay. no. Do like the twelve days of Christmas, but we're gonna uh, start. We're run the first day in January, the second day in February. Oh man, because we're only on. You know, we only have so many episodes. Yeah, in yeah. December. You can't. Don't think you can do. Well, as far as holidays, like uh, in game <coughs> holidays, like uh, for example, uh, Dragon Heist uh, surrounds all holidays within Waterdeep, and I mean, if you don't have the book, it's a great book. Because, I mean, it's a lot of urban encounters, but there's a lot of festivals and stuff like that. Now, one of the things like in my home campaign, yes, we always use festivals and holidays. Like, for example, my character is his backstory uh, was kind of tragic. And what happened to his family happened around a water Davian holiday. And uh, it's a it's a festival. It was called the Trasol Festival, and it's basically it's like imagine like uh, a mask ball, but it's like parades, and all the great houses have a ball where you wear your best fashion, and you know the designing guilds and stuff like that. You know, sponsor a show or something like that. Well, my characters parents were like the most you know uh, i want to say fashionable and regal um my father was like the rising bard throughout Waterdeep and all that at that time and somebody used that event to take them out you know su- supposedly one of the other great houses so anyway uh you have festivals like that like the Trasol festival uh there's one uh god in Waterdeep, uh, it evolves around the the, the Frost Maiden, uh, and Dead you winter, know, Midwinter Winter Shield. No, it's about the ice breaking okay, and all that. Okay, because Waterdeep, uh, Waterdeep freezes over completely uh, during the winter. Um, so, so there's a holiday about that and stuff like that. They have one for like the tinkerers and stuff like that, which is like a parade mm-hmm. and things like that. And I mean, I think it's great to incorporate things like that into your campaign. I mean, you do enough prep work, you know what the holiday is and you can go into it, you know? So that's great. And some of those holidays actually refer, reflect like real life holidays. I mean, some reflect like a spirit of Halloween, others like a spirit of christmas or giving or something like that so yeah i mean D D has a long tradition of holidays within game so and you know i i love using them yeah honestly the idea of a player uh putting a festival centric to their background and to their story that just sounds like prime real estate for making your dungeon master have to write up a festival. 
dang it, I'm going to have to do this. And what day is that going to be? Oh, she loves me for that. <laughs> I'm sure she does. Uh, Carol, oh. what about you? Uh, do you like uh, the holidays in, in the setting, in the campaign? Uh, uh, or do you really prefer just being like, you know what, it's a holiday. I don't want to think about it. I want to be a little murder hobo. And I want to do my one shots. Oh, oh no, no, no. I mean, just be told, I, I'm trying to say, I don't think I've ever, ever actually had a hall, have it, had a campaign running over the holidays or like when we play here, a lot of times before, I don't know if we're going to cancel much this season, but we were pretty much canceled for the month of December anyways. And Christmas and nowadays Halloween too. Those are my favorite too. So uh, I do like tapping into that. But if I'm running a campaign chair, I don't see why I, I would totally put one in. Um, but you, I think you said, what's your objective? My objective is that we're all sort of stuck being a one shot or even just a holiday reference in a campaign. Um, it's a real world holiday. It's we're all kind of, you know, we're all, especially the closer you get to Christmas, I get more and more excited about our Halloween. We all kind of have it stuck on our brains and, you know, it's kind of nice to just lean into that, you know, and add as part of your celebration. So, I mean, like when we do, we actually, for Halloween here, we actually host a, we host a uh, Halloween game. We don't actually run it. If one of our friends always creates the game, but it's like, it becomes like a party and such too. So say, now, it's do you part find... of my celebration where uh you know with holidays you have trouble having everyone show up and so um not or at being at your but age, i mean you know, all your friends are done trick-or-treating they don't want to hand out the candy they want to eat the candy and usually so, actually turn out i don't you know that's funny because actually usually i don't play the halloween game because i'm the one handing out the candy uh -huh. um but we'll see we'll have to see how that goes in future years otherwise there's no reason why you have to have a lot of time like this year we had the halloween game on on saturday and on sunday so um you know you don't have to have it on the exact date i mean i'm not going to play on christmas no way oh, come on no, come no on. freaking way i go to three i go to three houses that day <laughs> There is no time to run a play game on Christmas. Everybody else, everyone's out of town. So usually I, we just schedule for when everybody is in town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no, it's not really a pro big problem scheduling. So. I'm just imagining right now where you have an in-game uh, Halloween D&D &D section, session, uh, a one-shot. And then whoever comes to your door to get candy are the monsters that show up in the <gasps> session. In the oh that would be God. pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Now, oh my God. If, I'm gonna have. To if you're a good DM, that. you do it at your rich friend's house, who has <laughs> all the trick or treaters come because they're full size candy bars. Oh yeah. Oh, um, it doesn't matter. Like That's yeah. The, the street is the street we're on is more if you know attractive. the kids in the neighborhood and they talk about their costumes it's just like okay this is what i got i can prep this oh well, you gotta prep. have fun for the the dungeon master. we had about i mean we had about i think we had about 100 kids so i mean i'm not rich and i hand out only the the fun size stuff <laughs> yeah well i live in a street that's what i mean though it's the yeah. street that matters more my street is on like it, it's on a group of streets with a lot of houses and not a ton of traffic. So it's a really good place to, to for kids to come. And the neighbor hands out full-size candy bars. No, kids they don't know. I hand, my candy is house. better than the neighbors. They hand out like dum-dums. I hand out like Hershey bars. Dum-dums are delicious. Mm, um, clearly, that's what's Hershey wrong bars. with you. So uh, <laughs> generally, this time of year, we like to do a lot of theme one-shots here at Murder Hobo. We are always trying to push our players into the DM chair to try and host something special for uh, uh, our one shots. Give our usual DMs uh, a break. Uh, when I say DMs, I really mean just the one DM, Frank, because yeah, really? I, I get all the breaks I want. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> for the G most part, you GM every two. You GM every two weeks. Hell yeah. Other than this week. 
Oh, this is a gonna wonderful look. break. Let me tell you, I get to answer all those questions that uh, have been piling up since the beginning of the campaign. Um, but last year, uh, we did actually uh, do, uh, and quite with our themes that we like to do for Between the Rolls, uh, where we try and make a theme of playing different games or talking about different games, different monsters, uh, uh, our one shots typically follow suit. Uh, and so uh, <coughs> I know last year, uh, Carol and I wrote one shots for the holiday seasons. Um, I wrote Carol, two technically because I wrote one for Halloween and I wrote one for Christmas. Oh, wait. That was the one. The Halloween oh, one got mentioned okay. in the in the thing. So okay. I'll I'll talk about like, Ethan. Dance Macabre. What does that have to do with that? Was Halloween, Halloween or the, that Christmas one shot she had? Okay, you have two to talk about. Yeah, a bit, I, then, if you I want me to talk about both of them, but let's talk about the Halloween one first, I suppose, uh, and then maybe because I'm really trying to remember what the Halloween one. I'll tell you. Oh. Okay, go ahead. All right, yeah. so well, um, if you want, all right, so the Halloween one was basically all right. So, well, let's start here first. Okay. Oh, you're going to run a one shot. Yeah. We we're taking a break. It is near Halloween, or you know, days away from Halloween. Jeez. It's I don't more prep than that. What the, um, obviously, Halloween is your uh, inspiration there. How did it inspire your one shot? And did you do anything special on top of uh, um, to make it feel like it was more Halloween-y than usual? Uh, I don't think I had to. So basically when I wrote that, that one shot was one I have wanted to write for a really, really long time. Uh, Music, there are a couple of things that inspire me. Music is most definitely one of those things that inspired me, inspires me. I have done, I did a like a mini campaign based off of Hotel California. But the Dance Macabre, which is said, it is a classical song piece written by Camille Sanson. Let's said, look it up, it's really awesome. And it invokes this whole image of, of basically a graveyard with the ghosts and the ghosts all waltzing around. And I believe that is actually what the song is about. So um, so I had that, so I've had that song and I've played that song and I love that piece. And it was like, I need to write something based around this idea. So last year, you know, the opportunity came as like, great. So finally, so I sat there and I, it all just sort of fell together. I don't because the song, if you said, if you listen to the song, it is very much, it sounds like something that is played on Halloween. Uh, any of you watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer, that song appears in Hush when they're busy trying to make the plants, they can't talk. So the music, I believe they actually brought a record of it or something, but that was the music that was going on behind. If anybody watches that show, that's, that's where it shows up. So, so basically I started with, okay, I started with the graveyard with the dancing spirits and it was like, okay, how do I make this a D and D scenario that people have something to fight and there's a story. And I came up with, okay. So it's one of the things in the song, this is more, it's weird. It's more about the song than Halloween that really inspired that one shot. Um, but there's a, vi the violin is a prominent, prominent, prominent part of that. So I was like, all right, there's somebody in the middle who's playing violin that they're all dancing to. And so I was like, okay, so it's, so they came up with, all right, it's an enchanted violin. That's got them all there. It's sort of like the Pied Piper keeping everybody there. Um, and, so, and so I was like, all right, so why is it keeping there? Because somebody did something to release all the spirits in the town. And this thing is now keeping everything in place. So and it sort of built. I just kept building it from there, and it, I, I really enjoyed it. So, yeah, basically they had it. It had the violin get stolen. So if they don't recover it before the end of Halloween, and this 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 is like three days long. It's not just one day. And um, if they don't recover it in time, then all the spirits go free and wreak havoc over the the area. So, and hey, the guys here succeeded barely. Somebody, someone <laughs> broke the fucking violin. Uh, 
No, it's I want to say it was Frank. Yeah, okay. Was, was it like, Frank wait, or was it you? That was broke? it me or was it, it was Frank? Kyle. I it think was it was Kyle. you because you were <laughs> using the violin to hit the freaking bad guy. Was I? Uh, mm-hmm. You were hitting, so yeah, you broke it, hit using it as a weapon. You numb nuts. No. You almost screwed up the entire, no. you know, if you, did, if you didn't get it, if you broke it. I mean, thank no, God. Right. I was like, I didn't si- decide to have all the magic just, you know, <laughs> to disappear. All I remember is my that character is me was. Pod beam downloading the dance macabre. It is a good, go. it's That's a sad. really good piece of music. Even even if, you know, I said, I, I think it sounds oh, good no, even I'm today. I'm downloading our episode on Mercury. Oh, you're downloading the episode? Why well, yes. so you can listen to it again? So I, uh, yeah, because I really don't remember what happened. I mean, yeah. I was going to say, and then, but I think then. it was Frank. I say, do you want to talk about yours, or do you want me to talk about my uh, my Christmas one shot? Because it was that too, uh, and I how think, I built that. Uh, our, I think our Christmas one shots were uh, uh, somewhat similar. Um, no, no, we were in too the diff- sense that we kind of we went uh, from shows. We took from shows. We took from shows, you but we took from with, two uh, very Rudolph, different shows. The red uh, red nosed reindeer. Yep, uh, mine was Rudolph. Dolly for Misfit Toys. Yeah, 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 yeah. The that Dolly was a great Sue. episode. That was a great episode. Oh I my know. God. I've been thinking back. I'm like, you know, I probably need to write a new one shot this year. I mean, come on. What's that to like? You had me, Frank, Kyle, and DJ. DJ, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it was a gr- you guys were great. And um, well, also, sudden- let's uh, set this up for the people because, uh, uh, and I'll try and remember which episode it is while you're talking about this uh uh we were discussing different um tabletop rpgs uh pathfinder uh tui right oh that's right it was running yeah uh as a mishmash of weeby goblins which is a very famous pathfinder game yeah mixed into a more holiday spirit which i think definitely elevated it uh, and then the players we had that night certainly took it to a new level. Um, oh, talk God. about your inspirations for that um, and what you were hoping to get out of it because you had two goals. You made a holiday one shot and you had to demonstrate Pathfinder 2E, but also make it simple enough for uh, uh, the three morons who. Uh, <laughs> Four. Oh, yeah, three more. DJ Actually, has played five or has it played. It was four Pathfinder. morons. Were you Actually, the moron? No, there were four players. Two who knew how to play. Pat oh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. I yeah, did yeah. not. <laughs> I yeah, did. I know. I had a little inkling, but not much. I think the thing of it is, I didn't have to do much to make Pathfinder uh, simple enough to p- pick right up because I think it is Pathfinder 2, especially. I think one's a little crunchier. But even then, I mean, if you play D&D, it's not hard to learn Pathfinder. I mean, it's close enough. It's still the same principle. You roll D twenty, add your, add your various ability modifiers, and you know, and then the only other dice you use are, are damage dice. It's pretty much, you know, it's it's same. There are different rules. Yes, there are. I mean, and that's where I come in. You know, ex- to explain the rules. But I mean, but the thing of it is, all right. So why I went with the weeby goblins because I could because they're they're pre generated. Seeking employment is your goblins. Yeah, they yeah. were seeking employment. I didn't realize that was the name of it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So it was basically that was it. They were see, the goblins. We were trying to get jobs and you're trying to get jobs at Santa's elves. Santa Claus is but workshop. your goblins, not elves. So you have an uphill battle to get that job. So you wrote a really good letter, which he answered, said, come on up. So as I said, I like to, I like to use, in, for like one shots especially, I like to use inspiration from, show, from media. Obviously, I said Dance McCava's song. And this was, this had elements of Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer in it. Um, so basically, they had to go to the Isle of Misfit Toys and actually try to fix up some of the toys to bring to Santa. And they got the dolly for Sue. <laughs> I will we got the never for forget Sue. the fucking dolly for Sue that they basically turned into a stripper, I think. <laughs> well, the artwork, worker. the fa- <laughs> I, I, well, I can say, think it was Dawn's, 
know, D's fan art. D's, sorry. Oh, yeah, D's no, fan that's art. okay. D's fan art. Uh, was, which um, keep an eye on because we're going to have to talk to D and ask if we could put that in the holiday t shirt because that would be amazing. We to should totally, put, we, we Frank, should you need that to put that on the t shirt. I have really the artwork. Dare. I have the artwork. I can send it back to Frank. Oh, yeah. He doesn't have it. Um, but, you need to put it on the shop. But that <laughs> is, yeah. But that's why I'm thinking stripper because she drew the Dolly for Sue on a stripper pole. I, it, it's awesome. It is an awesome piece. <laughs> So oh and then and then of course at the end they hit the big battles of course against the uh, abominable the abominable yeah, snowman or whatever those the bump. I just like it because Stabby, <laughs> my character, ended up making Uggs out of the abominable snowman's feet. He's walking around. This is why. Okay, so there are reasons <laughs> why I went with the goblins. Uh, <laughs> we have well, this is about women. Hold on, I'm reading. Frank is of course on chat. And I was saying, what the hell's the deal with the women's underwear? I heard oh that before cook-off, uh, before, yeah, before cook-off, I'm like, women's underwear? We have women's we, underwear? We have in women's shop? underwear in oh, the, that's in the right. shop. Uh, no. uh, if someone asks, where's that fish smell coming from? <laughs> Show them your cred underwear. Oh, my God. I don't think, is cred one of them? Do we have cred on one of them? We should. Kyle holds up a pair. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, so, I'm wearing them right now. <laughs> so I'm sorry to say I'm totally, Kyle today. Totally done. Down. And by the way, 10% underwear. off the uh, underwear too. Uh but I, I digress. <laughs> but uh but you know the goblins I thought were perfect for you guys, okay? Because goblins and shenanigans and murder hope we all kind of go hand in hand, even where everyone was afraid, actually, that that when they release goblins, it's a playable class, a playable race, rather, or an ancestry, as it is in Pathfinder 2, that everyone was just going to play them to cause chaos and during the society right. games. And they were well, absolutely right. Well, not so, not so much. I haven't actually bumped into it too much uh, when I've been doing society stuff. I've seen goblins, but the players tend to keep them pretty much in, in rain. Um, but the thing is, I was like, yeah, what better? And they said they had stats for, I think actually I went, looked at the stats and it wasn't the right level I wanted to run. So I ended up going back over and making characters. Oh, oh no. no, we lost Kyle. Kyle. Oh, hey, back. I'm back. Okay. <laughs> oh, you idiot. You probably screwed up the cameras. Well, no, I mean, he's in the right talking. spot. Yes, There's he did. He screwed us. up. Yeah, Dave. Uh, oh, 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 maybe. Are we all still in the right spot? Oh, yeah. No, nope. we're it's in the holy way. Crap. Right. Oh, yeah. How did we do that? Uh, Frank <laughs> is going to be very happy with me or oh. not. And I no, don't. no, actually, he doesn't have to fix it. So, yeah, there you go. all right. So, um, but okay. yeah, I mean, but so that's, I mean, why I thought, I got, you know, this is like in a one shot, if you know who your players are, you can really actually, and, and you do pre generated characters for them. You could really lead into finding that right race, class, whatever uh, combination to give that group. And I said, I thought these guys, goblins, it's going to be goblins. And so I built the thing around, said the fact that we're goblins and the fact there's Rudolph, the red nosed reindeer. And it's like, so what elements can I pull in from the show? You know, I thought, I, f- I think first I thought, why would, what, what would goblins be doing in the North Pole? And I'm like, for Christmas, because I wanted it to be Christmas, you know, real world Christmas. And I'm like, okay, they want to be Santa's elves. Like, it's the one thing that made sense to me is they want to be Santa's elves. And then, then I thought that's then I thought the Island of Misfit Toys to fix the toys as a test to then bring that to the, the workshop. Now I keep thinking, you know, maybe I, I wasn't going to do one this year because I've just been really busy, but maybe uh, I should do another one this year. You have a Thursday open. Well, it's not a Thursday. I, no, I do it on a Saturday a for one shot to, Saturday. Uh, right, a one shot. Oh well, no, I'll be stuffing my face with turkey and back napping. together and do a part two. <laughs> well, that's I believe. I believe Ms. D wants really, really like to have a part two. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm thinking maybe, maybe we go with Frosty the Snowman this year. Ooh. I don't know. I, I have. I sort of have something percolating in my brain. Uh, 
So, I mean, that, that would be up to Frank and you know, to give me the time slot to do it. But I'd love to have you guys come back and play again, too. <laughs> Same players. So what was you two, Frank and DJ? DJ. No, yeah. DJ. Mm-hmm. If he's, if he's, I'm pretty sure he's available. <laughs> um, but yeah, doing? but that's, but anyways, that's a little about my inspirations on this. And I said, and was to why, you know, I said, especially when I get that close to the holidays, that's all I can pretty much think of is Christmas. So I just lean right into that, <laughs> you know, and make it part of my celebration. So I was just glad I got to play in both of them. I played in yours. And yeah, I, in well, I get to play man. in Kyle's. That was yep. fun. You want to tell us how you were inspired to make up? What was it? How the Twits Stole Christmas? How the Twits Stole Christmas. I uh, um, was obviously inspired by the Grinch. Uh, and then a previous Between the Rolls, because, you know, every year during yep. the holidays, we talk about holiday one shots <laughs> uh, and we get new inspirations for it. Um, and the previous year, uh, uh, we had discussed Frank, myself, maybe Carol, and the one, the only, the magnanimous, uh, 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 flowy, lock haired um, Kenny oh, but- Rogers. Kenny Rogers? Uh, well, he's yeah, Kenny that. Rogers. No, you're right, Kenny Rogers. Kenny Rogers, yeah, yeah. Kenny Rogers uh, visits our stream. <laughs> he does on occasion. You mean uh, Scott? Fine, Scott. Uh, uh, we had discussed turning uh, certain holidays into that, uh, and how the Grinch stole Christmas was brought up, and it's like, well, how do you? Where do the players come into that, and where that? And so, I had actually spent the entire year thinking about that uh, until I realized that what I wanted to do was instead have uh, uh, the village uh, people be full of villains and cultists um, and that it was the part of the uh, players to um, steal Christmas back in order to prevent Asmodeus or one of the it wasn't Asmodeus it was are you sure it was uh, started with an M. I'm I think it sure. was Asmodeus. I thought it was Asmodeus too. Oh, actually. I know it's not now, and you're you're uh, gonna tell me to look it up, but I'm not gonna look it up, that. Kyle. Uh, I will look it up here in a bit. Um, you gave us uh, characters to play, didn't we? Or I did have characters for you to play, but at the end of the day, I, wrote, I was I just think... like, you know what? These no, the you did because I had Cindy. Oh no, maybe we, it made. We had Cindy to create our who... own own characters based on yeah uh, on Doctor Seuss characters. Yeah, uh, I was yes. the Grinch. So I had, <laughs> so I had Cindy Lou. Who, Cindy Lou, who um the paladin Max the dog. That's yeah, with right. Eldritch Bark. Ernie was Max the dog. I Eldritch love it. Bark. Ernie, Ernie uh, uh, was like, "I'll do Max," and then he immediately asked can I play an actual dog? And sure. I had been doing research for Cred Campaign. Uh, one of the uh, uh, playable races in there is actually, um, uh, don't tell anyone in the Cred Campaign, a cat. And I was just like, okay, this is what your dog will have as options. Here's how it works. Go for it. And he came up with <laughs> the Eldritch Park. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we had uh, uh, one of our few and far between players come on who I don't remember who she was. She was the um, the Grinch's love interest. That's uh, right. Yeah, I forgot That's what right. it was. Yeah, I was the one and, person um, that didn't play somebody that was like directly associated with the Grinch in that, huh? Yeah. Associated <laughs> with the Grinch movie. Yeah, the Grinch <laughs> movie. It was still... These young kids, sometimes they don't know where uh, things originally come from. Uh, and so their job was to steal the roast beast, uh, which turned out to be a horrifying version of a turducken. Mm-hmm. Uh, we killed the roast months. beast. Yes, you did. Mm-hmm. Um, we did steal oh, all the presents. Did I make it terrible and they were stuffing children and other things into the roast beef? They were. Yes. They were. So, but, yes, yeah. I was uh, doing my Cthulhu cred research at the time. Yeah, and it worked. 
and mean, it, it shows. Was very, it was very Cthulian, actually. Uh, oh, yeah. And then I had, because um, I was interested in doing skill challenge, whatever I read at the time is something I want to work into whatever I was doing. And so uh -huh. I did some research into skill challenges from 4E uh, uh, and um, listening to uh, other tabletop games, uh, uh, Blades in the Dark, uh, which kind of helped inspire that, um, which is a heist tabletop RPG. And so I left a very open swath of, okay, you need to pass certain chill checks. You can't double up on anything too much. Tell me how you are robbing presents from these houses go. And, and I had, I was the Grinch and man, I, I created a damn good character and all that because he could not fail a skill check when it came to 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 burglaring and stuff like I that. I mean, it's because I remember that part of the challenge went a really long time. That uh -huh. went for that a really I long do time. remember. Yes, it was oh, like yeah. it, uh, other than it needed to be a little shorter, but actually with the skill checks and everything, I thought I really liked the fact you left it open for us to figure out what to do too. Yeah, that was cool. We had. Uh, um, Max and the Grinch were just stealing presents left and right. Oh Cindy, yeah, I, I don't remember too much about. I what can't remember. Did, I was doing something, I think, to distract them. But our love interest, uh, who did not play D and D at all, oh, and was yeah, getting that was her out remember, yeah. on the side, yeah. Yeah. did some absolutely brilliant things. Where she just looked at her character. She, I'd like to cast sleep. Uh, yeah. Do me a favor, make a roll for me. It's just like, Seriously, yeah, no, you completely screwed over this other side of people trying to collect these presents. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and then uh, you had to steal the uh, Christmas tree Star. ornament, which yeah. uh, was it's... actually a very nice ent if you had the opportunity to talk to him. Uh, you didn't. Uh, you didn't quite succeed in nope. saving the town from the cultists. Nope. And that poor Ent was burned alive. Yeah. As uh, uh, Agamemnon maybe swallowed the entire town. Uh, it, was, it was a wonderful time, I think. Uh, uh, and the inspirations for that was um, specific plots or specific points in the Grinch story. Um leaving crumbs too small for a mouse the roast beast uh taking the presents from the houses uh and of course um for me the movie grinch with jim carrey was stealing that christmas star from on top um and i do believe there were some extra magical items in there related to it um there was definitely a bag of holding for everybody to hold everything in um Grinch had that. <laughs> the Grinch definitely had that. Um, yeah, and so despite the fact that I had other things I wanted to do, other things to kind of help inspire it, to make sure I had that holiday feel, I made sure I had these points and those points were hit upon uh, uh, through this D and Cthulian blade and dark uh, uh, mashup that I attempted to do that night. Um, and I think everyone had a lot of fun with it. At least that's what they keep telling me to my face. Um, we did. Bugs in their vehicles, which we will now play for you right now, says different. No. No, it was, it was, it was, no, it was fun. I mean, it was an interesting, very interesting take on the Grinch. Mm -hmm. I have, it's funny because I actually, because we, we did the whole, the episode on Between the Rules, I think, where we were talking about taking the Grinch or and what we do with it and i had a i have a completely different take on what the grinch is and that whole thing i have so. an idea for one it'd be really good santa sack of toys and it uh, it releases bagman <laughs> are we doing a nightmare before christmas that, that would Kr be awesome yeah do something with krampus in it you know He's mm -hmm. got a he's Krampus. got a sack. We could do a Krampus. Yeah. He's got, I mean, you think about it. I think he puts bad children in his sack. Mm -hmm. Oh my. That's so why I was saying bad. Bagman as Krampus would be really good. All right. 
Well, guys, that is the end of our show. Uh, Unfortunately, we got into a little bit of reminiscing, uh, Mm. which is bound to happen, especially when you don't get a chance to talk to some of your favorite people for a couple of weeks. Uh, These people love talking to me and they can't stop. (laughs) I'm sorry. I I tried. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, but but I think it was but there was still I think there was a lot of good points in the reminiscing. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, oh, yeah. on yeah. how we built these you know scenarios and such for the holiday season. Yeah, sure. so dungeon masters, you know, remember out there, holidays are a great way uh, uh, to certainly break stride in a campaign, or to simply explain why there isn't a player there. It's just play something new like that. Um, I don't know. Final thoughts, people. Starting uh-huh. with David, because I think Carol kind of already had her final. That's thought. okay. Well, that's fine. No, holidays are great. Are great, great tools to use for a campaign or uh, a one shot or anything like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be a real life holiday. You can use create one or have one used in the lore of D and D. So yeah. Use holidays any chance you get. It, it's a great way to break up monotony or anything like that. Or if your campaign was too tense. So, oh God, God Frank. Good holiday. <laughs> uh, Carol, any any final thoughts from you? Oh, you said that was my final. Why? What did I don't Frank know, just If you had more of a final thought, you know. Otherwise, uh, we can just wave at the camera. I mean, just have fun with it. Frank. Great way, great way to bring, <laughs> great way to. Bring the season into your, you know, into your gaming group. Okay. So uh, for those out there uh, who live in the real world, uh, happy Thanksgiving this Thursday. Uh, yeah. Don't forget Black Friday after that, then Advent, then Hanukkah, uh, and then Pearl Harbor Day, then Poinsettia Day, then Winter Solstice, then Festivus, then Christmas, then Boxing Day, then Kwanzaa, then National Fruitcake Day, then New Year's Eve. All those wonderful holidays just waiting for a D&D one-shot or perhaps if you live in Dragonlance, you celebrate All Cows Day and Tendermore or Forge Day. Or maybe you like the Forgotten Realms and do your Horn Meat and Liars Night. Either way, huh? go celebrate somewhere else. Good night. We're tired of looking at you. Good night. Bye. <laughs>